Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Eric Otoir. I'm working in the IBM cloud unit as a technical sales. And um, one of my hobbies there is uh, working with blockchain and the blockchain deployment we have in the cloud. And um, as you might or might not know, it, we base ourselves on this Hyperledger uh, open source um, Hyperledger fabric. Um, and there is rather recently a version one of this. And there is a lot of things that happened with this version one, which make it much more consumable, which make it much more easy to use. And uh, that is actually what, what I'm going to try to explain in these uh, 15 minutes that we have here for this session. Just a, a, a quick uh, recap. So what, what, what this blockchain, so blockchain is all about business networks where multiple uh, participants exchange some assets. Um, you want to immutable uh, record transactions. Those transactions are typically uh, based on the usage of smart contracts, which are uh, written in code in the um, in the in the blockchain itself as a transaction, um, so that's kind of the the the, the big kind of ideas of 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 of, of blockchain. Yeah. Now, what what is the the hyperledger doing? So on the one hand, you have the hyperledger fabric, which is the blockchain fabric implementation, um, and of course you can just write code for that. So you can write your own smart contracts and use the APIs and 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 do all those things. And until the version one, that was the only thing that was there which wasn't that easy. You had to understand quite well the APIs. You had to uh, write the smart contracts in Go code, which is not necessarily everybody's uh, most well-known uh, programming language. Um, so there were quite some skills needed to do something in the Hyperledger version 06. A lot has changed with the version 1 because there we have something which is called Hyperledger Composer. And the whole idea about Hyperledger Composer is that instead of reasoning in Go code, you're going to start reasoning in business concepts, you're going to reason with entities and, and all those kind of things at a, at a higher abstraction level. And then the composer is going to help you by generating uh, things like your smart contracts, etc. And then once you have done that, you, can of, you will, of course, still make your business application, whatever user interface, uh, whatever integrations uh, you want to build, uh, you're going you're gonna to do that. Um, now, we will immediately also, because that's the purpose also of, 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 of the session, I will show you a bit the composer. But so if you want to get started with it, it's available in the cloud. So you can just go to that uh, link, which is shown here, and you can get started. We will later also see there is also a possibility to install it in-house. It's basically delivered as a Docker container, which you can, as soon as you have a Docker infrastructure, you can spin it up and, and, and get it running locally. Now, with the with the, um, the the composer, there is also a tool set uh, which comes with it, which uh, helps you um, in working as a developer. Um, so there is on the on the one hand, we will see the composer web interface where you can do a lot of things and generate from there. But there there is also possibilities that you just work with your models in sets of code files. So there is a modeling language which allows you to model the entity and, and all those kind of things. You write your business logic in JavaScript. And then there is a number of support so to build this in, into a, a DevOps chain um, with a usage of, of a lot of open source things. So there is, uh, for example, from an editor viewpoint, there is some support for Atom or Visual Studio Code, uh, which you can use. There is a, there are some plugins for that, which then allow help you with the, the syntax of, for example, the modeling language. There is a number of command line utilities. There is some Yeoman um, 
a code generation which we have, which helps you in building the skeleton for your application. So it's even possible to generate an Angular-based, for example, uh, UI to your uh, blockchain uh, backend that you built with the uh, with the composer. And uh, there is also some integration possibilities to integrate with APIs uh, in the backend based on the loopback uh, framework. So th that's kind of the composer components that are being used in, in, in the solution. It's all open source uh, stuff, etc. So you can easily get started uh, with these things, install them on your machine and, and, and get going. Now, what we're going to look into, I'm, I'm going to show you just the user interface of the composer because that's about the time which we will have in this uh, session. Um, and the example we're going to use is the example of implementing a solution for um, vehicle auctions. And that's it's one of the examples that also comes delivered with the tool. So you, it's one which you could easily reproduce yourself and go in more detail yourself after uh, the session. So what, what do you typically need in a vehicle auction? And it's a good example because almost everybody knows the kind of eBay or other like auction websites where you will on the one hand have two kinds of parties. You have some parties selling and buying uh, the, um, the, 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 the vehicles. And then you will also have a, some people monitoring the whole network, uh, the auctioneers who might have some more rights and might uh, um, exercise some control on the network. Then, of course, from a viewpoint of entities that play a big role in this, it's going to be the listings of the cars. So describing what the car is, what is the, 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 the minimum price and all those kind of things. And then uh, there will be... Um, Basically, the um, the transactions will be uh, bids on the car, and then th those bids will follow certain rules. And those rules, you're obviously going to bake them in the uh, in in the smart contract. Yeah. So here is a bit of of, of things. So the the, the 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 entities that will play a role in this kind of example will be the the vehicle uh, identified by its I unique ad identification number um, and then the vehicle listing which will describe uh, what the, the state is, the color, uh, etc., uh, the type of the car and, and all those kind of informations that are useful uh, for the people wanting to buy uh, the, uh, the cars. Then we also need to model the participants so there will be um, the um, the members, which will be the people either selling or buying cars, uh, and then there will be uh, the kind of governor of the um, of, of of the whole thing, which will be the uh, auctioneer. And then the um, the transaction logic, we will put it in some um, some uh, scripts, and there will basically be a number of types of transactions here. There will be the um, the possibility to bid on a car, which follows certain rules, for example, that the bid is binding and all those kind of things. And then there is also uh, the the logic that needs to happen when. Uh, the time is up when the auction closes. What needs to happen then to uh, close off the, the, the sales transaction? So that's the kind of things that you would need for a vehicle auction uh, business network. So let's now uh, go to the um, to the compo Composer Playground. So as I already said, you can just go to this URL and then you will um, be able to use it. Um, there is also the possibility to install it locally using Docker containers, and that's also the same applies for the Hyperledger Fabric. In the past, it was much more difficult to install your own installation of, of, of the blockchain network. Now you can easily spin up nodes by using uh, Docker and using the Docker images which are provided uh, at the Hyperledger Foundation. So let's now move uh, to some uh, demonstrations. 
So if you want to find this, you can just go to the hyperledger.org and there uh, look at the Composer project. And if you click on the uh, Getting Started, uh, that will take you uh, to uh, the uh, page where you can access either the Playground online, which is just this Docker container running in the IBM Cloud, or you can um, install the Composer locally using uh, Docker. So if we um, if we go to the come on. it's already open. So if we uh, go to the uh, composer playground, so let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is create some um, new project. Um, And you can give it the name. And add the description. And then, of course, if you do your own stuff, you will probably start with one of the empty templates or with the basic sample uh, network. Uh, you can also um, uh, take one of the, um, the, the, the examples, which is a quick way to have something to play around with and, and look at. So we can do this. And now I already have, it. so if you would create your own empty project, you of course would not have anything. Uh, here we already have a number of entries and it, it's a good way to, to see how it works. Um, here is this model description language, so it's quite easy. Uh, you just, anybody who knows how to program should be able uh, to do this. So you see here that there is a number of entities defined, the vehicle listing, the participant with each time a number of attributes and some indicators uh, whether um, attributes are mandatory or not uh, and all those kind of things. So uh, that is basic, the basic start. You define this network and then uh, once you have that, you can also start to define your um, smart contracts. And this is being done in JavaScript code. So here, uh, for example, in this example, we have the uh, close bidding, what is happening when the, uh, um, when, when the auction ends. Um, and there is also the code for uh, make an offer. And you see uh, the business logic. And again, this is much more simple than it was in the past because now it's just uh, simple uh, JavaScript code. The last thing which you um, can still do is because um, one of the concepts of Hyperledger is that it's a permission-based uh, network, so you can also do access control lists, which allow you, again, in an easy way to specify some security. For example, what kind of operations uh, somebody, uh, some participant in the network will be able to do, um, and then um, you will be able to specify even on a attribute basis if attributes are modifiable or not uh, by certain uh, members of the of the of the network and that is being done by specifying those rules in in these files and then the nice thing is that uh, you can immediately start to test it so you could um, and we will I will not start to do that right here because we will not have the time to do that but you can just create now some members, um, create your network, and et cetera, and try out your transactions um, uh, to test. But that's, of course, not the final thing. This is just a tool to allow you to develop those things. The, the, the next thing you're going to do is then, um, is then basically export um, this 
And that will allow you then to use all those other tools to really start coding, uh, deploy this on, 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 a, on a blockchain fabric um, and, and, and so on. One other remark is you see now here we're doing these uh, entities, etc., through the browser interface. If you like more um, just a coding approach and you're anyhow going to use your code editor, you can also do this, for example, in Atom or in Visual Studio Code. And through the plugins for those tools, you will also have validations on the syntax of those, those things, the, on the composer things. So this was just sh a short introduction um, about... Um, about the uh, the Hyperledger one and what you can do with this composer, uh, there is of course a lot more you can um, do with this than we could show here in the 15 uh, minutes. Um, but uh, if you want to know more, here are some links. You can find all this code. You can get started. And also in the Hyperledger uh, documentation, uh, there is a number of tutorials that get you started with this. So if we uh, go quickly back uh, to this. Um, so here there is also uh, the tutorials on, on how to how to do it, uh, etc. So so you can get easily started. So that was it. I don't know if there is any questions. I will also be around at the IBM boot. So if anybody has longer questions, we can also handle them over there.